untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Historic Games video. Today we're taking a look at an updated version of Blue-Green Merfolk, and I do think Merfolk are pretty well positioned in the meta at the moment, with the retro artifacts from the Brothers War introducing a whole host of new spell-based combo decks to the format, decks trying to abuse Ashnot's Altar, you've got the Semblance Anvil combo decks like the one I featured recently, so a good way to beat those decks is by applying lots of early pressure, backed up by a little bit of disruption in the form of counter spells, and we can do that with two copies of Spell Pierce in the main deck to counter a non-creature spell unless its controller pays two generic mana, and then we also have the new Hex Catcher from Dominaria United, a 1-1 Merfolk Lord giving other Merfolk plus one plus one, can play that instant speed thanks to Flash, and that can catch the opponent off guard, no pun intended, by sacrificing a Merfolk we can counter target a non-creature spell unless its controller pays one generic mana. So if we keep this up and play this at instant speed, we can potentially counter a key non-creature spell from the opponent, while still adding extra pressure to the board to quickly kill the opponent, because a lot of those combo decks don't necessarily have a lot of interaction for creatures, so a good way to beat them is just by curving out and playing a lot of lords that give other creatures plus one plus one, and Merfolk has those in abundance, with the Merfolk Mistbinder giving other Merfolk plus one plus one, We've got the Master of the Pearl Trident, which in addition to giving plus one plus one also gives our other Merfolk Island Walk, which can maybe make them unblockable if the opponent's playing any islands. And then at three mana, the full set of Marrow Regery, which gives our team plus one plus one. And then whenever we cast a Merfolk spell, we can either tap or untap target permanent. So great use of the Regery's abilities to untap our own lands, so we can quickly empty our hand and cast a whole bunch of spells to present a massive board. But we can also maybe tap opposing creatures down, so we can make it easier for our team to attack. And then looking throughout the rest of our deck, of course, we're also playing four copies of Collected Company, another great reason to splash a bit of green as we get to put two creatures in play from the top six, and all the creatures will have mana value three or less, including the two copies of Glasspool Mimic, which we can play as a tap land, since we only have 20 lands in the main deck, so this can make it 22, but it can also copy one of our many Merfolk Lords to still add more power and toughness to the board, and we can maybe find it off Collected Company. Now, do make sure that you already have a creature in play when selecting Glasspool Mimic, since it won't be able to copy a creature that you find of Collected Company. And then at one mana we've got the full set of Shoreline Scout, which is another reason why we can get away with playing such a low land count, because it can turn one of the Merfolk in our hand into a tropical island, can also maybe upgrade a breeding pool so we don't need to take two damage, and then we'll usually get the plus one plus zero bonus until end of turn, so it can attack for a healthy amount, especially once we start deploying more and more lords, so having that one drop will scale nicely over time, so it can actually deal a ton of extra damage. And then we've got the Kumena Speaker, 1 mana 2-2 two, two for the most part. And then at 2 mana, besides all the lords, we also have 4 copies of Silver Gill Adept, which will draw a card when it enters, but we do need to reveal a Merfolk from our hand when we cast it, otherwise it's going to cost 3 more, so typically something we want to cast as early as possible. Also shines in the grindier matchups, where the opponent has a lot of spot removal, since we don't really care if the Silver Gill gets removed. And then we also have two copies of Merfolk Trickster, which shines against opposing creature decks, as we can flash it in, and then tap an opposing creature down, and it will lose all its abilities until end of turn. So it can even flash this in in the opponent's upkeep if they're maybe playing an Elf Tribal deck, tap a Lord down so it doesn't make any mana for the turn, so it has a ton of extra utility there as well. So if we were expecting more creature decks, we would probably cut Spell Pierce, add more Tricksters. If we're expecting more non-creature decks, we add more Spell Pierce, probably don't need Trickster as much. And then at 3 mana, besides Reacher and Mimic, we also have two copies of the Merfolk God, which will protect our team by giving other Merfolk we control Ward 1, so the opponent has to pay one extra mana to target them, becomes indestructible as long as we control at least two other Merfolk, and when it attacks we also draw a card, so another great addition to the Merfolk deck. And then of course four companies, only 20 lands since we have the Shoreline Scout, as well as the Glasspool Mimic to help there. And then a three basic Soaring City as an extra utility land to maybe bounce something. And then we've got a bunch of untapped blue-green dual lands, one Cascade, since we do expect to get to three mana at the very least, but I don't want to draw a ton of these. And then Unclaimed Territory, another nice dual land in a tribal deck, although it doesn't help us cast Collected Company, so still need to make sure we have enough other green sources. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand is pretty heavy on the two drops, but still seems like a keeper. 
up against Gigantha, so it could be a Wizard's deck, never mind. Void, maybe pointing towards an Eggs type of uh, combo deck. So having the Hex Catcher is going to be pretty important, although we can wait on it for at least one turn. So let's name Merfolk, play out one of our Lords. Turn to Egg, that's fine. Merfolk Trickster is also nice, so if we don't need to play Hexcatcher, we can uh, flash in a Trickster as well. Gonna miss out on one damage by not playing Hexcatcher now, but it might help catch the opponent off guard and counter a key card like Anvil, perhaps. Okay, and then we'll add on to the pressure here with Mistbinder. And then we'll hit for two. And then I'll flash in Trickster, which can maybe add another Merfolk to counter something scary. Mindstone Sacrifice Chromatic Star. A Radiant Fountain up to 18 again. Okay, so opponents are looking for more ways to discount their artifacts. We're going to flash in a Trickster. And a Mimic is great. So we'll pay two. Play Master. And play Mimic, copying, I guess, one of the two mana lords here that's not a hex catcher. So I guess Mistbinder will do attack, and that should be an attack for lethal, and our opponent explodes. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, missing green mana for speaker, so that's gonna be a mulligan. This is better. Turn one scouts, and then bottom the breeding pool. And then I'm not sure what I want to pitch to the Shoreline Scout. Could keep two lanes and then hope to draw third. Or we could get rid of, let's say, the Regery. And then we're guaranteed to curve two into three. Yeah, let's get rid of the Regery. And then hopefully we can draw extra cards with our Merfolk God. Silvergill was also great. And then we'll keep the Hex Catcher a surprise. Up against the Red White. No Companion. Make that Jeskai. And a Faithful Mending, so it could be a Reanimator deck. In which case, having that uh, Counterspell mode is super useful. Should have one more turn before we need to counter. So for now, I could play Regery, and then next turn, I could potentially still play Master, untap a land, have Hex Catcher available. There's a small risk of a sweeper dealing 3 to everything, in which case I would still rather have my 3-4 out. So, yeah, I guess we'll uh, try this. And then next turn we can make use of our Hex Catcher, so there's no Mizzix Mastery on Ultimatum. And the opponent had an Anger, so glad we played it this way. Could, of course, also have just kept a Hex Catcher and... Uh, countered the anger, but now we get to play another lord, or I can keep up company as well. That's maybe better. Hope they don't have the mastery, so we can just company instead of having to play Hexcatcher. Solve the equation, that's fine. Now I guess they could also get a Pact of Negation. But our opponent goes for mastery. So now we company, and then I might want to main phase my Hexcatcher. And then, for now, no point in copying or legendary creatures, so grab Speaker and Trickster. Yeah, I'm in favor of main facing Hexcatcher. I can play Regery and then still play Hexcatcher. Because, yeah, what's the problem? Our opponent goes for Mastery, has a Pact of Negation in hand, counters Hexcatcher, and then we cannot counter their 
Mizzix Mastery. So, I guess we might also just have Lethal here. If we go for it, that's 13 damage. So that also works. But assuming our opponent had more life to work with, I still like main phasing Hexcatcher here. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. And this ends okay. Can play Mimic as a land if needed. And then we've got a decent 3-drop. So we'll have to decide how to sequence our lands early on. Opponent with a looting. So it looks like a graveyard combo deck of the dragon variety. So picked up another 3-drop. Yeah, I guess we'll just play Speaker here. And then next turn play Tap Mimic. And then we can play our 3-drops on curve. Speaker's only going to be hitting for 1. But at least we get a little bit of damage in. The alternative, I guess, would have been Tapped Mimic and then turn to Trickster. Although this might have higher upside if we just draw the untapped lands naturally. So our opponent's filling the graveyard. We're hoping to find a counter spell here. Hexcatcher or Spell Pierce, and there's a Spell Pierce. Now, I don't think there's any danger of 3 mana combo. So I'm still fine to play a Tapped Mimic. And then next turn, I wouldn't be able to tap out, so I can pass with Trickster and Spell Pierce available. Opponent passes. And uh, yeah, just hit for one. It's a pretty slow clock. Since otherwise our opponent can Unburial Rites, bring back Velomachus. Gaze resolves. If we had an extra blue source, this turn would have been quite a bit better. And then we're still hoping to find a hex catcher soon, since it's not going to take long for the opponent to combo a second time. And Burial Rides on the Sphinx now. And then they could still have a Mystic's Mastery in hand, Pact of Negation as well. So, opponent needs to kill us this turn pretty much which they might be able to with the Dragon Storm. Interestingly, if we had an extra blue source, Trickster removing the ability of one of their uh, dragons could have actually saved us. So what do we shuffle back? So Dragon Storm kills me, and if I give them Omniscience plus solve the equation, they just solve for another Dragon Storm. So I don't think there's a way for us to survive. I guess it's better to put back Omniscience in case, I don't know, opponents holding the remaining combo pieces, they can't cast them at least. There's Terror of the Peaks, and then there's Bladewing. Opponent can get back Velomachus as well. So that could attack. So if we did have double blue, we might have tried to target Terror of the Peaks here. Although with our opponent having a high enough storm count, if they have another Blade Wing to search up, they can get back the Terror of the Peaks from the graveyard and still have enough combo pieces. So I don't think it would have made a huge difference here. So yeah, Back of Negation. Pretty good card in these combo decks where you're just trying to go off in one big turn. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand seems pretty decent. Lots of one drops and then a hex catcher. Then we can pitch something to scout. How about a breeding pool to just upgrade it so we don't take two? Next one probably goes speaker plus scout, and then hex catcher afterwards. Put it on a colorless deck. Turn one void. So could it be another eggs deck? Looks like it. So a double speaker seems good now. Early pressure is good, and then having at least one key counter spell is what we'll need in this matchup. Do we see a mind stone? Not yet. Opponent sacrifices chromatic sphere and a golden egg. Okay. Alright, another hex catcher, so. I think I'm okay missing out on a little bit of damage in order to 
surprise the opponent with Hexcatcher. And maybe counter an Anvil as opposed to our opponents waiting a turn to cast it. There's a Cloud Key that's also worth countering, I think. Untap, and then we could play a Regery if we'd like. Smash. And that should be lethal. Alright, sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and seems fine. Good interaction, some card draw, couple lords, and a Gilded Goose from our opponents. Opponent has an island in play as well, which could be relevant if uh, we draw our author lord. For now, a scout can go. And turn to Silver Gill. Probably going to be the play. So your opponent's on a Sultai combo deck with the Wishclaw Talisman. Okay. Do we feel comfortable tapping out for Silver Gill? Opponent's probably an Ashnaut's Altar deck, is my guess, and our opponent could already play it next turn. So I guess that means I keep up Hexcatcher and Spell Pierce, and then wait on Silver Gill. Opponent makes a mana. And Diabolic Intent. Yeah, that resolves. I'll just counter whatever they play next, and I'm guessing Ashnaut's Altar is part of that, but I could be wrong. Flash and Hexcatcher now. And then... Can play Mistbinder. And still keep up Spell Pierce, although maybe Silver Gill is still better. And our opponent explodes. Yeah, another spell-based combo deck that has a very hard time against Hexcatcher. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Halurus as companion. So it could be kind of an Arcanist the deck, could be something like Spirit Dancer, Auras. In which case, we have a good mix of interaction, so I'll try it. Scout can find us a blue-green dual land, so we shouldn't have any issues with our mana. And never mind, Retrofitter Foundry, so it's a Thopter Tribal deck playing green. So they can already make a 4-4 here, which is pretty scary. I think I still play Scout over Keep Up Spell Pierce. And then... What do we get rid of? Probably want to keep most of my lords. Trickster can tap down the 4-4 for a turn. How relevant is that? Could do it next turn while keeping up Spell Pierce. How relevant is Hexcatcher? Opponent could have portable holes that we want to counter. But uh, yeah, opponent can easily pay the 1. So I don't think Hexcatcher is actually going to be at its best here. Their opponent with the best start they can have. Turn to Dissident, so that's what they're playing green for. So Dissident says when an artifact enters, so we can potentially target it with a Merfolk Trickster. Sentinel, we respond with Trickster. And remove the Dissident's ability. Sentinel will make our Spell Pierce a bit worse. Company's a good one too. So play Master, Attack, keep up Spell Pierce. Teething Wormlets. Author a good one in a green deck. Opponent passes. Now what? Could set up a company and then hope to hit something to tap down a Wormlet, perhaps. Or I could go Silver Gill plus Master. I think I prefer setting up company. Also have a Soaring City, which could bounce, but that's kind of expensive here. And we don't have a great attack. So yeah, we'll just go land company. 
And then no attacks for now. Let's just keep up Spell Pierce too, for what it's worth. Artifact lands pretty sweet with a Wormlet and Dissident. Now Sentinel is going to cost 2 mana, but we weren't going to be able to pay anyways. Opponent passes. They can also make a Servo with a Foundry, which will pump with Dissident and Wormlet. Found Reachery and the God of Sea and Sky. Is that better than another Lord? If I grab Reachery plus another Lord, I can tap down both a Wormlet and a 4-4. So that would be pretty strong. Although, protecting our creatures could also be relevant. So Reachery is the important one here. And I uh, could play Double Lord here if I'd like. Time down Wormlets. Time down to 4-4. Four, four. And smash. Opponent has a Fragment Reality to exile our god, replaced by another lord. So we'll attack. And our opponent seems in trouble, and they explode. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. I don't think this hand's gonna cut it, so only two creatures. Four lands is a bit much. This is better. And then could let go of one Mistbinder, keep Reacher in case we need to get past some blockers. And then I guess we can uh, turn territory into Tropical Islands so we can cast a company with it. Don't really want to get rid of one of my creatures and then end up flooding. Even though it would be fitting for a Merfolk deck, I guess. So turn to Silvergill, reveal Mistbinder. And Hexcatcher is nice, so up against Blue-Red. Not sure which variety. A looting, so combo deck. And a Dragonstorm combo deck. Let's see if we can get our revenge. For now, I think I'm still relatively safe to tap out for Reachery, although there is the concern of a Sweeper, of course. But Reachery would let me maybe double spell next turn by untapping a land. So I think the upside is there. And in fact, I could just present Lethal next turn. So Mistbinder doesn't even have to untap a land anymore, but might as well. Could also tap the opponent's land. Don't think that's going to make a huge difference. So we'll untap Tropical Islands, play another Mistbinder. And then still have Hexcatcher available. And our opponent explodes, so yeah, that was a speed run to the next rank, only dropping one game in the process, and we faced a ton of these non-creature spell-based combo decks, so it seems like a good time to be playing Hexcatcher Merfolk with a couple spell pierces in the main deck as well, as opposed to more Merfolk Tricksters, but if the metagame shifts in favor of creatures, then you can always add more Tricksters and cut the spell pierces, so that's one of the flag slots that this Merfolk deck has access to. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.